The first thing we're going to talk about is just level one wording and how to place the word. Best spot to put it. Where, when, when you look at this mini map, like you see the mini map right now and where your wards are at. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking at this mini map, where do you think, if you have one ward to place, only one, let's say your, your emblem, your shadow ward, right? Where are you going to place it? Uh, well, I don't know if that's mine that you see right there, but there's one kind of just to the right of Raptors. Okay. So that's just kind of like from the mid rotation. Um, another good spot, I guess, would be where we were just playing there. Kind of like if you could get over there, if you could go through jungle and get over there, um, that would be another good spot. But yeah, I would I would probably throw it just beside if I was support. I'd probably throw it just beside wraps there to the right. Yes. But let me let me elaborate on that a little bit. Like one thing that we're always going to recommend is a, when you're warding, especially as a support, you want to make sure that you cover as many likely paths as possible. But above all, you want to make sure that you put a deep ward. Because one thing that you brought up there was the fact that that ward that got placed was right on the outside edge, right? Like close to the fog wall. You know what I'm coming from? Yeah. The issue with putting a ward there is by the time they show up on the ward, if you're way up there by their tower, by the time they show up on the ward, you're now like, oh, shit, there's somebody behind us. Like, it's almost a little mm -hmm. bit too late. So we always recommend, see, that's like, that's your Murdoch that put that ward there. So especially as a support, make sure that you're always warding deep. I always recommend okay. on the north side and the south side of the raptor pit. Because regardless of all these little entryways and stuff like that, the, more, the most likely taken paths are north side and south side. And if you place them properly at these four point intersections on the top and the south, you can actually cover mm -hmm. with two wards, eight different, eight different entryways, technically. You feel me? Yeah, that's a good point. Now, for example, that Boris where he's standing right now could have been seen in a ward if it covered all the way to the stairs. You get me? And if you were in lane, mm -hmm. you could easily fall back and it's just a little bit safer. You got anything you want to add, Kick? No, that sums it up the, the small point of where to word in the beginning. The biggest thing we want to talk about was not dropping right beside the fog wall. Yeah, uh, to a that happens a lot for beginners. Honestly, um, a lot of beginners forget the fact that there's a ward, so it's not just using it, it's using it a little bit more tact tactically. True. Rolling right off of that, we just had a simple statement about never attacking a minion, and the importance of uh, letting your ADC control how he wants the lane to run. Whether he wants to slow push it, whether he wants to freeze it, whatever, just letting it, the ADC do that portion of the job. Yeah, like in, in this clip right here, and you're not only going to see the words that we were talking about, notice how as I'm almost like distracting the enemy, I'm not, hitting my, I'm not hitting my ADC's minions whatsoever. I'm not affecting the wave. I'm letting the ADC control the lane while my job is to just harass the enemy and distract them. And if they go for my ADC, I protect him. But if not, I'm poking. You see the entire time, all I'm doing is song and dance. And you see what I was talking about right here in that split second? I put it down to where it reaches the stairs, the raptor pit, and towards lane. So as soon as somebody shows up there, it pings. We have mm. quite a bit of an advance of when to retreat because we have that upfront information. Okay. Now, is there yeah, anything you want to add? Spot. That's, a, that's, that's a good point, just having one on the north and the south. One thing I started doing is, if you look at kind of that wall just to your right, there's like a little concrete kind of half circle. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I've started placing it just in the, in the middle, kind of on the ground right there. But like you were saying, it's good to have one north and south just so you get both sides of that and there's just more coverage. 
Depending yeah. on how many wards I have, I personally place it where you place it too. Um, that's not a bad spot because you can catch corners of both of them. And I think if you run, what is it, clairvoyant? It increases you can the radius. See the full side of both of them. You've got to be if mindful that walls do obstruct your vision. They don't see through walls. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Now, if anything, is there anything that you want to add as far as because, you know, this is a pretty simple subject. And again, if these are simple things that the average person might be like, well, well, duh, I'm not going to attack a minion. But you'd be surprised. There's a lot of supports that are like, hey, I'm going to help push. I'm going to hit the minions. And a lot of supports don't realize that even if you just hit the minions once or if you use an ability and damage minions, you are effectively pushing the wave further which in fact actually makes your team be more exposed, which makes your job harder as a support. So having- yeah, having hindering the ADC at that point. In a way, yeah. So having the proper warding and not affecting the lane helps you just stay safe in the lane as much as possible, right? And yeah. if anything, uh, what was that? Let's go to the next subject here because this is a pretty good segue for the next one too. Uh, the next segue is the mini map and communication, and that goes in with uh, between you and your ADC, as along with the rest of the team. Yeah. <clears throat> now, so the general thing here, in, in my opinion, is mm -hmm. with support, um, and with jungle, you have the most free time to watch the mini map and to provide feedback for the rest of your team. So, Looking at that as the support, if you see something happening that nobody else is pinging, it's a good thing for you to ping. Yeah, like enemy missing right, or, you know, careful mid because you see the right, like, if the solo laner, like in this case, in this video, if solo laner were to go mid and there was a ward that caught him, but nobody mentions it, since you're the support, oftentimes, again, unless you're saving somebody's ass or unless you're chasing for a kill, nine times out of ten, you're just kind of waiting for some shit to happen or you're trying to cause something to happen. So you often ha have a lot of downtime where you can communicate, hey, this is going on, that's going on, I see this coming. And one of the reasons why we have this clip, not in, in this clip going, not only because it's a good team fight, but uh, I'm going to play a little bit of the audio here. And I want you to just listen to like some of the things that I was telling the team. And I was just communicating back and forth with the team in general here. Okay. They're waiting for us to try and collapse so that way they can collapse on us. Again, Gideon's dead, so we have advantage. It seems like they're chasing me, but I got out. I'm here to help Pay close attention to the communication as a support. And again, very important to mention, this is the if you have the luxury of being in comms with your team, you got to take advantage of stuff like that. But even if you don't have that luxury, a lot of times using the in-game pinging system, you can get your point across as well. But here, listen. Looks like Hop is initiating. Go for that pick. Hold on. Time out. Pause the video. Let me fucking edit this bitch out and close the door. <laughs> what happened? I don't know. Oh, OBS started picking up. All the dogs barking in the background. What you really want to pay attention to here is my communication with my team. And you're going to notice it's not just like, hey, Focus this person, focus that person. I'm letting them know what abilities I'm casting. I'm letting them know, hey, I got a stun coming up for you. Just cause- yeah, movement speed, here you go. Exactly, because at, at the end of the day, if you're the ADC or if you're the mid laner or whatever, and that's there with me, you might be like, hey, I don't know if this is a good fight or I don't know if I should retreat, chase, but as soon as you hear your support say, I got a stun ready, bet, that's a little bit more confidence. Or, yo, movement speed, go. Well, I know what that means. He wants me to chase him. He's going to come with me. You get me? It's like here. I'll just play it again real quick. But this is just a very good example of communicating and... initiating. Go for that pick if we can. And just letting, you, letting your teammates know that you're still with them. And just exactly. what's going on. Giving them updates about what the other... Like, you're giving them updates about the other team as well. Yeah, and, and you notice here, too... I, even being a support, I almost like guided the fight itself. You get me? Like as a support, like, yeah. I, like I see that Master Hoff here, he dove in and you hear me say, hey, it looks like he's initiating. Follow up on him. And then here. Movement speed for everybody, go. See, movement speed. Yo, there you go, good picks. I got a thunk for him. All right, he's thunked, he's thunked. I call so it a thunk, but son, see, movement, movement speed. speed. That's a trap. Trapped. 
Good shit. There's a team wipe. There's a team wipe. Get him. Kai ends up getting the decker. Get the fuck down. Old. Exactly. Like, like one of the one of the reasons why I did here also. Like here, as soon as we kill this guy, we stun him. Because a Kai that can't attack is a Kai that's just gonna die because he's not getting his life steal, right? Yeah. So I saved my stun specifically for moments like that. Or for like abilities, like you're gonna see me stun the Gideon here in a second. It just because a stun knocks him out of his ultimate instead of him being able to do all that damage yeah. to my team. But like right here, I gave everybody the movement speed boost. I place my my trap. That's a trap. Now it was intentionally meant to trap both of them, but the Grim went forward. Now I like so I tell him, hey, that's a trap. He knows that that person's trapped. He can keep going. But then I focus on the person that's not in the trap because what good is it for me to just sit yeah. there and attack somebody inside the circle when I could be helping the rest of my team? Because it's I'm the support. My job is to keep them alive and help them in a fight. See, they get that good kill shit. easy. There's a team wipe. There's a team wipe. Get in behind us. And that's just get the fuck down. It's a very simple yet good example of be communicating and making the difference as a support, right? Now, is there anything that you want to add to this kick? Like any any observations mm -hmm. or anything that you would recommend as well on the subject of mini map and communication? No, I mean the biggest thing is just don't be afraid to ping. I've said it in another video too. Don't be afraid to ping even in five stacks. Uh, getting in yeah. the habit of pinging regardless whether you're playing with everyone on your mics or not is a good habit to get into and then also don't be afraid to over ping don't be afraid to give people too much information about who's rotating where and even if you can't see them on the mini map let people know those little pings they don't hurt anyone in the long run that's true absolutely yeah especially if you're like like you were saying before when we were discussing that just if there's a lot of people discussing it doesn't matter if it's in-game stuff or off-topic stuff but yeah it never hurts know, to spam a retreat not, and they see like, it on the screen exactly with a whole bunch of voices going and you're saying oh i have to back just a quick like be right back so they can see just which character that is you know that's actually yeah. backing like it's a it's a good point even five stacking pings for can sure be really helpful now one thing mm. that we i know we were gonna kind of touch basis on a little bit here and it's actually not a not a bad segue into it is just the fact that sometimes you won't have a ward sometimes you got to get some vision and be like hey there might be somebody on the other side of the wall and quite frankly face checking do you know what face checking is first of all yeah just manually going in and looking on your own exactly like especially as a support right. sometimes even face checking when you don't have a ward can be the difference between hey somebody just snuck up behind us or we're good for another few minutes or for another few moments. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Now, um, especially with support because you're soaking up the XP in lane regardless if you're close enough to the, the minions. So you can walk up a little bit further ahead and look through that fog wall and you can just stand there and look through that fog wall while your ADC is getting those last hits. If there's a situation where you need to be doing that. Yeah, yeah, you'll, you'll, be, you'll be pretty close. Now, uh, let's go into the next subject there, Kate. Uh, moving on, we got uh, general positioning as a support. Got him. Now, I actually want to ask you, Turpy, as far as, give, give me a 1 through 10. Your positioning as support, how much do you think it matters? 10 being the highest, 1 being the lowest. Just generally speaking? Yeah, just in general. During the course of a match? Yeah. Probably an eight or a nine, maybe okay. an eight. Okay. Why, why do you think eight? Like, what's the what's the reasoning behind it? Um, just because from what I've under from what I've understood so far, it's it's a bit more crucial to. I mean, I guess it does relate to positioning, but if you get caught out of position, or if you're a little bit out and you get caught, as long as you save your ADC save them from from getting killed then you know it's it's better than them dying instead of you or even worse both of you dying at that point so True. um it's important but so is adc positioning right adc positioning is super important 
Yeah, and we'll, so, we uh, actually have a whole, like a whole video on uh, like beginner ADC and position and everything for you know those of you watching that want to check it out. But uh, mm-hmm. you, I mean, you basically hit the nail on the head. It's it's one of those things that your positioning is going to be crucial for many factors. But long story short, it, it's it's a game of survivability. Like you're not only trying to keep your ADC alive, which your positioning is going to matter in that case, but you're also trying to keep yourself alive. Like the video clip that we're watching right now is a good example of the fact that the support was way out of position as far as, you know, like their team is attacking. He's a steal. He doesn't dash away. He's just literally slowly walking back and jumping. And then it's to the point that he's like, okay, so the steel is fighting them by himself and fighting their minions. And then kick is just like, what the hell are you doing steel like why, why are you doing this to me because that's at the end of the day that's still a kill that their team got yeah you lost audio yeah you're muted oh hello am, 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 I, am I back yeah there we go you're there back. we go yeah oh, leave it to discord but no at the end of the day as long as e- even if you're a support and you're owing eight in like the first 10 minutes, that's still eight kills that fed the enemy ADC. How is your ADC supposed to catch yeah. up? So that's why, like, exactly. And even if, even if their support ended up getting in one or two of those kills, that's now given them a bunch of coins for, for sure. You know, Assist to everything. Two thirds to an item. Exactly. And, no, and not too many people realize that, especially being a support towards the beginning of the, ma- of the match in that duo lane, you are probably the most important character in that duo lane. Because your carry, it honestly, can't do much early. Your carry mm-hmm. can kind of do a little bit mid-game. But late game is when your carry gets there. But you're supposed to carry your carry until he f- gets fed. Does that make sense? Yeah, exactly. They need time to farm. They need time to get at least, you know, their boots and a first or second item. For sure. So in a way, it's, it's almost your responsibility to keep them alive and help them get kills, which can be a little bit more complicated in its own, but it, it re- at, the, at the core of it, it all comes down to positioning. Good positioning will open up kills, a kill potential, and good positioning will save you nine times out of ten whenever it comes down to it. Is there anything that you wanted to add there, Kick? No, I mean, the positioning of support can vary a lot depending on which support you're playing. But generally sure. speaking, um, keeping your carry alive is important. And um, not making poor positioning to isolate yourself to get picked is important. Um, if you can avoid those two things, I think you'll, you'll find yourself doing a lot better. Uh, All right. Moving on to backing when low health or low mana. Now, this clip that we have on here, it's just mad simple. It's literally just me getting low and backing. But it, there's, there's an often, I want to say it's almost like we bait ourselves as supports. Whenever we, even if we're low health and we're like, yo, but I can land one more stun. Oh my God, I can, I can yeah, go. I you did in this clip, actually. I mean, <laughs> low key, but I realized before going back in, because I, I could easily throw another, another stun here. You get me? Like, again, like, it's just, you can't help it. Nine times out of ten, we want to kill. We want to help out. And here, I was already kind of low. I'm at about a third health, right? And then right here, I got hit a little bit. And at this point, I'm like, get out, get out, get out. I helped them land the stun, and then I'm getting out. And then instead of going back in, I'm about to, and then I'm like, oh, you know what? I honestly shouldn't. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of baiting myself if I go in there. Because easily, one of his thunks could kill me. You get what I'm saying? So true. It, it's a quick, simple tip, but backing when low and then living to fight another fight is a million times better than staying when you're too low and then potentially giving somebody a kill. It doesn't matter if you got the kill or it, let's say it, even if you helped get a kill, but you died. That's one to one. What, what the hell is the point of that kill? You get where I'm coming from? Mm-hmm. But if you guys get a kill and don't die. It's, it's a much better scenario. Sometimes a trade is worthwhile. Yeah. But just in, gener- in general, generally speaking, living to fight yeah, another day is, exactly, is, is a lot better. 
Did you want to add anything? Because it's, it's pretty comfortable simple. Backing and I find myself backing more comfortable in the duo lane than any other lane because there's somebody there. Support, if you back, you've got your ADC getting solo XP, or if you the ADC and backing the support getting solo XP. So nobody's actually losing anything from you backing in that lane. Um, and it's and it's not as easy to shut the tower. While you're gone. Yeah. Um, I know whenever I play ADC or support, I find myself backing much more frequently than if I play like off lane, for example. Um, we're falling behind the level makes a huge difference. Yeah, uh, that's true. But yeah, that's true. Because regardless, and you know, in optimal scenario, somebody is going to be taking grabbing that XP from your team, whether it's the ADC or the support. Unlike other lanes, when where you leave, the enemy laner starts leveling up and etc. Now, you want to go ahead and talk about the next subject. Uh, sure, we're going to talk about body blocking enemies after CC. Now, this was so going to be rough. That... <laughs> I mean, I mean, you want to take this one? Because I was going to say, this, this is a rough one to kind of explain. <clears throat> I mean, essentially, you talked about trying to keep your ADC alive as a support and that being the big role. Um, in this clip right here, Windu jumps in front of a ball so that the ADC doesn't get stunned. Um, now the mechanical skill for that takes a little more practice than other things as a support, where you being can able to press read things and stuff. AOE heals. Um, but being able to block CC from your ADC or whoever um, allows him to either escape or do more damage, or not get further caught out, uh, or chain CC. I mean, there's a list of yeah. things that it has an advantage for. Um, Especially in the finding duo. ways to absorb that. And, yeah. Because like right here, if they would have landed, like you see how they landed the stun and went in. Now, me as a support, I don't want my ADC to take any damage, right? As soon as I saw that coming, I got in the way because now they're focusing on me. And what's my ADC doing? Focusing on them. Yeah. At the end of the day, they can hit me all they want, but my ADC is the one that's going to kill them. Yeah, and how you're body blocking for him after here going back. You guys went back together. He didn't take a single shot of damage either there. So, mm -hmm. the, I mean, talking about when to back and stuff too, if, if Windu was even lower there, Windu could have backed and there would have been hardly any repercussions because yep. that lane was pushing under his tower. He could have soaked up the safe farm. for solo level for the uh, ADC. And uh, there wouldn't have been a whole lot of repercussions from that. But yeah. if the ADC had to back right there and Windu had to defend the tower by himself, that would have been a lot more difficult. And I'll, sure. and I'll tell you, as far as body blocking, whether it be basic attack shots and whether it be abilities, um, like you said, the mechanical sense of it, it's going to take a while for you to learn and get used to. But a clear indicator, it's just the, their positioning. When you see that, like, for example, look at the minions here. You see, notice how far back they are compared to their minions, right? Like, they're hella far back. They're at max distance. Yeah. But I go back and then I turn around and now I notice, hey, they're right next to their minions. Why would they run up five feet for no reason? You get where I'm coming from there? Like, why in the world would they run up five feet and get closer to mm -hmm. us for no reason? So I figured, I'm like, hey, they're yeah. probably going to try something. Now here, you can actually... You I was just going to say... Yeah, I was going to say, too, if you look, you can see Decker actually holding, holding the orb. Yeah, because when you queue, how it prepares it, obviously. Exactly. And then it lets you throw. You can see her running up with it. Exactly. So, like, right here, I see it. So, the first thing I do, mm -hmm. you immediately just see me start walking in towards the front of Murdoch. Because I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, I, I can read that shit like a, like a fucking book. Like, he's about to throw it. That was like... Yeah, that was a good play. And with your supports, too, a lot of times those white items give you more armor than your ADC is going to have anyway. So you're going to take less damage from that than he would mm -hmm. in that circumstance. Not not this early in the game, but once you have like a, a miracle or yeah. a bot D, you're mm -hmm. going to be taking less damage from that ball. And just a little thing to throw in there that I think it would be worth mentioning, considering if you're building those white items, you're going to be a lot more tankier. Uh, building the Templar faction or the, uh, the affinity isn't a bad thing because you can actually share some of that armor that you're building with your ADC and your tank gear as a duo. But that, that's, that's a little bit different build-wise. You guys can see other videos on the YouTube <laughs> as far as build-wise go. But 
uh yeah you got anything you want to add on that one kick no i think that's good um i, th- I, mean, I think that's fine i think that cuts it all i mean let's go to uh, let's can, go I, to can i add one can i add one thing on that topic yeah really man quick? go for it just What's because up? it was a it's a support cc body blocking topic mm-hmm Conversely, you can do that as well. If you're on comms with, say, you're a Narbash and you have a Murdoch, if you can get close enough to them and you can plan out a CC, oh yeah, their ADC with a CC. If you're close enough, run behind them so your Murdoch can come up, hit his Q, hit his buckshot, and um, you know what I'm saying? You're if your body, they're yeah. trying to a, your body yeah, blocking you, you them can from bait. actually going back to tower. So you can yes. so just conversely, you can that's body an block offensive offensively, skill, but it's it's a defensive skill at the same time. It's both. Absolutely. And speaking of absorbing CC too, don't forget you can also bait the CC. Like if we know that that Decker has a stun, I might honestly talk to my ADC and be like, "Hey, I'm going to try and bait her stun." So then, as soon as her stun is yeah. gone. What are they going to do? They can't you stop us from killing. Yeah. She's got, what, like you know eight seconds? Cool exactly. Mm-hmm. So then at that point, you guys can go on the offense and you still have your stun. So it, there, yeah. there are offensive aspects to it and defensive aspects to it, for sure. It's just one of those things. It, it's a song and dance in the dual lane. And communicating with your ADC is helpful. But if not, being on the defensive side definitely is not a bad thing. And reading Absolutely. your ADC. If you notice your ADC is aggressive you can get away with, you know, being a little bit more aggressive yourself. But it's just kind of like reading the yeah, field. For sure. All right, now... We l- roll into... Minion awareness. Now, yes. I don't remember what this is, so let's see the clip first. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you're good, you're good. So, if anything, as far as minion awareness, this is... This is more along the lines... Like, we talked about this a little bit in our, in our ADC video. But fighting with or without your minions really does make a huge difference. Right in this clip, you're gonna see uh, the you know support and ADC attacking when they have the minion difference when th- when it's good for them because we have all the minions right. But as soon as we notice, it turns into a like a fifty fifty basically. Like we both have minions, and we notice that we're both getting rather low. We disengage. See, like right here, we have minions, they don't. It's a good time to attack. Because it's literally a posse versus them. But as soon as these other minions got in there, since we're attacking them, we're now getting hit also. So what we do is we disengage because we know by fighting in minions just leads to death. They have a Narbash. They can heal while fighting. We cannot. So that's, yeah. why, that's why you see us disengage there. But you also you got to be very mindful as the fact that let's say you go in, you initiate a fight. Like right here, I hit that twin blast with a basic attack. Those minions start focusing me and shredding me. You got mm-hmm. you got to be mindful of where your positioning is always, and not just that, how those minions are going to affect. Especially now since they got buffed to that range minions have twice the range. As soon as They're they aggro you, now. it's ridiculous. They will yeah. they will do more damage to you than the actual and in, individuals in lane did. So yeah, like per second, it's crazy. For sure. So it's so it's one of those things that you de- you definitely want to be mindful of those minions. You want to have that awareness as to, hey, do we have more minions than them? Is it worth engaging? Hey, like if we're gonna engage, are the range minions at least destroyed? Or do they do we have more range minions than they do? Because that really does make a huge difference as far as possibly winning a fight. But that also goes along with knowing when to disengage, which we kind of talked about there. I know I kind of like go off in these and, and basically go over the whole subject by myself. Kick, did you, did you want to add to that, bro? No, that's good. The unfortunate part with like, in my opinion, for supports in particular is the gap from beginner to advanced or intermediate topics is very small. There's, there's a whole lot of very general things for supports on the beginner side that once you get out of the realm of the very specific things we're talking about, it can get pretty complicated pretty quick. Yeah, I would say a big differentiator between beginner to, you know, average to expert, a huge differentiator is simply just execution. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot, a lot of the expert supports still do a lot of the basic things 
on a consistent level. But the difference is they're doing it on a consistent level, not just, you know, every once in a while or they forget or they got overwhelmed. They got caught up in the fight. So they stayed. Well, like right here, I want to see if I'm, I'm able to actually play a little bit of the sound here so you can hear it. We have an advantage. We have an advantage. You hear me say we have an advantage? Back up. Run, run backwards. Run backwards. Run. You see? I got a stun. I got a stun. I got a stun. You see how I'm communicating about the whole back and forth? Like, run backwards. I got a stun. Back up. Back up. Both. Back up. Both. We don't engage. Yeah. And then I tell him, back up. Back up. We don't want to get. We don't want. We don't, don't want to get thirsty for that kill. But that's why, yeah. again, it's a song and dance. I tell him, hey, we can back up. No, no, no. We need to. We need to. We can go forward. We can. We need to back up. Like, hey, you know what? I got a stun. I might be able to do something. So like right here, I stun. He does a little bit of more damage. I do my movement speed next to him. I'm trying to stay alive because I'm lower health. And then I see him. I'm like, hey, you know what? All those minions up there, they got more health than us. He can heal. Back up. And that's why, again, it's the, the trickiness of going from beginner to average to expert is just sometimes the actual execution. Because like right there, the fact that we went back and forth within 15 seconds that's not something that you see a lot of beginner supports do. A lot of beginner supports will either full commit or full retreat. You get what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Yeah. And, and that's why it's, it's incredibly important to have that minion awareness because that, the minions alone can make the difference of when to retreat or when to go forward. Yeah, it makes it tough with supports too because not only are you trying to read your opponents and read the minion waves and read the rest of the map, you're also trying to play off of how your ADC is acting. If you're solo queuing a support, your ADC between matches can be completely different. Like those, those can be polar opposite. Yeah. You can have someone who I don't even try to hit the other guys until I've got 100 CS and they will sit there on their T1 and they will see us. Just slow farm the, the entire fucking minutes. game until they're ready. Hmm. And then you'll have another guy who you run into the next match who he's trying to get 20 kills by 20 minutes and he is just going for it, holding it down on their towers Bats. as fast as he can. So I think being able to adjust for that and then also having to deal with the repercussions of how your ADC plays is a very hard thing to adapt to. And I think that's and that would go more towards. Come into play. Yeah, that would be more towards the average to expert side, because it is one of those things mm -hmm. that, again, the execution is what makes that difference there. Yeah. All right. So moving on, we are moving to uh, saving mana, particularly for emergencies. Now, we have this clip again. Honestly, it's just the thing. One mistake that I see a lot of supports do, right, is they just throw that stun as often as possible. Ability spam. Yeah, like yeah. like as. You, cut you out lost again. your audio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're back now. Am I back? Yep. What the hell? All right. But, um, but yeah, uh, one of the things that you see a lot of people do is they, they just spam those abilities. They consistently keep themselves at low mana and then let's say a jungler comes in trying to kill your team you know your adc or something like that and you're like oh i don't have enough yeah. mana for a thunk or i don't have enough mana for a stun and then you watch your adc die and mm -hmm. it's like rip i didn't have mana mm -hmm. and that's why honestly like running magician is actually really good on supports because the more mana you're missing the more mana you get back but yeah. regardless of what happens in a team fight like if you're gonna, if you notice in this fight, I choose what abilities to use very carefully. I don't just spam my abilities. Like you see, like right here. You I haven't used your E at all. Yeah, like look, L look as soon as this fight starts. I just want you to keep an eye on my cooldowns at the bottom of the screen here. My Q, my E, and my right click specifically. I did my stun. I did my slow. He's running away. Now's a good time for that right click. Now watch, I got my stun. Wait for it. Okay, now's a good time to stun him. I still got my E. I do my right click, my, my, uh, my cage, because that's what makes sense. I still got my E. I don't need to use my E. 
I need to conserve my mana. See? There goes that Q. I stun him out of it. I'm chasing him. See, I cut off that pathway, give the right click, and now I ran out of mana. Mm -hmm. If I would have just kept spanning sooner, I would have run out of mana like six seconds ago and maybe not been able to stun that Gideon out of the sky. Not, yeah. been, not been able to cut off that path, the exit pathway by putting a bubble there. You get where I'm coming from? Like using, using, yeah. using your abilities wisely is again, one of those things that can easily go from beginner to average to expert by just simply execution yeah. and practice. But using, yeah, using it because you're in a situation that because it makes sense. It and this is a time where I need it, not I'm using it to use it and hope I get some damage from exactly, it. Exactly. Yeah. There's a lot of times you can see people use yeah. the Decker Balls or the, the Narbash Thunks at a time to where the ADC obviously cannot follow up with it, even one auto, you know? So they just, they just wasted 100 mana. What is it, 120 mana right now for your Decker Ball? Something like, like that, just, I don't know. Just because they wanted to throw it, you know? Um, yeah. whenever there's not a lot of opportunity to follow it up for anything. But then uh, your lane doesn't have a stun for the next 10 seconds. And then you because guys, you just a fight it, starts and you're like, uh -huh. mana that, Yeah, plus the mana, you either have to regen, hope you have a mana pot, like, yeah, yeah for sure. So it snowballs. Yeah, it easily Ooh. can. Which, if anything, the, which one is it? This clip here kind of, kind of mentions what, uh, what Kick was talking about. Like, whenever I play Narbash, oftentimes, I will harass with my Thunk. Like, look at my mana. Only 340 mana early on. That honestly isn't a lot. I could Thunk them the entire time, but I'm not. You get me? I'm letting them yeah. hit me. I'm letting them take minion damage. Like, right there. I thunked them. My ADC wasn't able to do anything. It happens, right? But what am I doing now? I'm like, hey, well, you know what? We don't have a Thunk. I need to do everything in my power. Because I wasted my thunk. Because quite frankly, that's what I did. At that point, I wasted my thunk. We didn't need to thunk. We didn't capitalize on it. And now for like 8 to 10 seconds, we don't have a thunk. So then you see me try and mitigate as much damage as possible. Keep the attention on me. Because low key, I don't want him to realize, hey, we could totally kill that ADC. Narbass doesn't have a thunk. You get me? Yeah. And that's something that you see here. Like as soon as it happens and I see them kind of stepping up, I'm like, okay, you know what? Let's keep this attention a little bit on me. I'm going to get a little bit closer, even though I'm melee, just to keep them distracted. Like, hey, waving. Hey, look at me. Look at me. Don't look at him. Look at me. Because I realized that I fucked up. And that's something that you could do, but it, just be very careful if you ever even try to go into that realm, because you can get fucked up <laughs> very easily and die. That's why you don't see me get too close at times. And I, and I back up whenever I start taking any amount of damage. But, uh, Honestly, man, essentially, most, most, like, you're, you're going to notice that in, in a lot of our videos, and especially in, the, in this one in support, a lot of these things really just kind of go hand in hand very, very simply in almost every scenario. Where is your positioning? You get me? Where are the minions at? Do we fight or do we not fight? All these things, as the game progresses, whether it be at level 1 or whether it be at level 10, they're all going to matter to you as a support because you have to try and stay alive as much as possible. And the longer you stay alive, the longer you can keep your ADC alive. But you also got to be smart about it, not waste all your yeah. mana, keep your abilities. You get where I'm coming from? It really, it, it really is one of those things that easily trickle on. And yeah, you're not, you're, not, you're not worrying about farming or necessarily poking as much maybe, but... You're paying attention to minions. You're paying attention to what your ADC is doing. You have to be really focused in that role. Yeah. Now, we've actually talked a little bit about, because I wanted us to talk about when to disengage and when to engage. We've honestly touched on that subject a lot as, as we've been talking here, just like kind of like back and forth. And again, it's, it's going to be one of those things that you're, you're going to have to play the song and dance. You're going to have to slowly get used to it. But as you become more comfortable with your execution and abilities, as you become more comfortable with being able to read a situation, you're going to be able to engage and disengage at several times without actually, you know, kind of struggling or, or being able to kill or anything like that. Now, 
do you have any questions about any of the things that we've talked about or anything like that? Not really, no. Not so far. Okay. I mean, if anything, honestly... It's been pretty straightforward. Yeah, we, we try to make it super straightforward, you get me? Because it is... Mm -hmm. Again, these are simple things, but if we watch gameplay or if we, you know, like, if we, if we actually look at micro decisions, then you're like, oh, well, you know what? I easily could have backed there. I easily could have disengaged or I could have engaged. We could have killed them. Or if I would have saved my mana and had one more stun, we could have engaged and got that kill. You get where I'm coming from? Sometimes, and I'll, actually mm -hmm. a lot of times, it's just those micro decisions that make a difference all the way from le level one all the way to level 18. And it's just getting better as you go as a support. And it's just, it's, it's probably going to take you just honestly time to better, to, to get that game sense improved. But as far as you get these basic things down, your positioning, your warding and stuff like that, it's going to make your life a million times easier as a support. It's going to make, your experience uh, a million times better. Because quite frankly, you won't be dying as much. You'll be able to help out. You'll have mana to cast abilities. And hopefully that, that should lead you to a win, to be real with you. Is there anything that you want to add as far as, you know, like a conclusion here, Kick? No, I think if you follow these, <clears throat> these tips actively, I think that you're going to see a difference in your performance. Whether you've done a lot of these things inconsistently or consistently throughout i think actively thinking about these types of things in your match will make a big difference you know now me okay. me and kick actually like to kind of like give a challenge every time we do one of these videos right as far as like a metric to to kind of hold yourself to right and as a support that's a little bit trickier but i would say as a support one uh, a good standard metric to have as a beginner would be in the first seven minutes Make sure that you back by seven minutes, have full health, full mana for the Raptor fight. And then also just don't die, to be honest, because you can go a full seven minutes without dying. And hell, even if you got 10 assists in seven minutes or if you got zero assists in seven minutes, if you haven't died and if your ADC haven't, hasn't died in seven minutes, I think you did a pretty damn good job as a support. If for the first seven minutes, you guys have stayed alive the entire time. Are you okay with that challenge there, yeah. Kick? You think that's decent? No, I think it's a good one. If you can keep both you and your ADC alive in seven minutes, I think that's a good one. And then, of course, be it, make sure that you back at seven so that you can both come back for the Raptor fight. And if shit pops off, you have full health, full mana, ready to go for a fight. But yeah, guys, I mean, if anything, Absolutely. that that was pretty much it. Uh, just doing a quick little shout out here. Now, for those of you that don't know, uh, Kick and Terpy are both streamers. Now. It, you, I will go ahead and put the li their links in the description below. But at the end of the day, I mean, the purpose of these videos are the fact that sometimes, even though some of us might be might consider ourselves experts or pretty average or beginners, there's honestly sometimes a lot of things that get forgotten as you play. Or quite frankly, you, people sometimes you just get overwhelmed and you're like, damn, I totally haven't been focusing on you know saving my mana or something like that and the purpose of these videos are not only to help you improve but to also make it make it a little bit easier to understand and hopefully these videos have been uh pretty simple to understand as far as our conversations of anything so if anything i want to thank everybody that's watching i want to thank you all for actually just sitting here through the conversation hopefully terpy this was able to help you out and unless we have any further questions you know it yeah peace guys till the next video later